Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It is bright. It's not really early, but I've been here since it was early. And I want to jump right into some Bitcoin price action as we spoke about yesterday. Um, as long as we were below this box, well, uh, it was going to be pressure on the downside back above the box and uh, things were going to flip bullish. And that's in fact exactly what happened. So what else do we want to talk about? Well, it, where is this likely to top out or is it going to top out? Um, let's take a look at some of the higher term time frames as the 15 minute Getting a bit of a lift off here, and um, that was right as everybody was pretty bearish, including myself. Um, and I still think there is a threat of pretty much the same thing that we've been talking about for some time, which is um, a test of this trend line. One, two, they're sucking everybody back in to get bullish on the market, but um, you know this could be a the first. Higher low in the making, higher low uh, in the making, and we'll confirm as a higher low as long as Bitcoin stays today pretty much back above, well, on a candle body closing basis, back above this wick right here. So if we stay above, I'm guessing that's 26, well, that's not 26.3, it's 26,800. So as long as we're above uh, 26,856 by end of close today, well, that'll be your first higher low in the making. And then we would be looking for a higher high. Um, and really, uh, you know, not ready to get bullish, really bullish back until we're back above this pivot right here, this last big old candle here at uh, 26,8. But what else kind of gives the impetus for the bulls to take control here? Momentum is crossed to the upside, not only on the two day, but the daily. No, daily will cross up today above 27,000. So, where is that pivot? 27,000. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the daily pivot as well. But we have had a bit of a flip flop market, and we have this government shutdown looming, right? At always a uh, Always a scare tactic, it seems, but uh, never seems like they want to shut the government down. I guess uh, Gary Gensler wants to keep getting paid, and this was him yesterday getting absolutely grilled by Congress. And to Congress. And we had, what did he say? You've got serious questions to answer to the public and to Congress, and we intend to get your compliance. We can do it the easy way or the hard way. And with that, I yield back. The ranking members now recognized for five minutes. You've got serious questions. Let's see. What does he say here? You're front running the courts. You're front running even the own administration, and no one has held you to account for that. I mean, I wish the Biden administration would say you're fired, uh, but there won't, the list of folks they need to do that for is long. Congress hopefully will with the SEC Stabilization Act. I yield. Frankly, you're front running. And one more comment here. Consider and not favor large financial intermediaries? Absolutely, sir. Now, Mr. Gensler, do you believe the vast majority of digital assets meet the investment contract test and are therefore securities operating illegally outside of the U.S. regulatory umbrella? As I've said, many of these assets are basically the public is anticipating sir, is that a yes on the efforts of others. Is the answer then yes? Again, without prejudging anyone, I do think that the significant Reclaiming my time. Are I'll take it as a yes. Contracts. And to be clear, sir, this perspective has nothing to do. Anyways, they absolutely grilled that guy. Said he was going to get, should get fired. Um, I couldn't agree more, guys. What else happened today? Jobless claims coming out uh, a little bit lower than the expectation, but higher than last month or that higher than the September 23rd claims. Uh, jobless claims four week average came out a little bit lower than expected. Again, bullish for the dollar. Um, continuous jobless claims also bullish for the dollar. And oddly enough, the dollar did take a leg down. Uh, GDP growth rate came in at 2.1% for Q2. And then corporate profits, nothing significant there. And core PCE prices, uh, quarter two at 3.7%, so lower than expected. 
sorry, lower than last month, but right in line with expectations. So nothing, uh, nothing amazing there. Um, do we have anything tomorrow for Friday? Personal spending, core PCE price index. Um, looks like we're gonna get a bit of a flat, a flat one here. And then Michigan consumer sentiment. Apparently that's important, uh, whether or not people are you know, expecting higher inflation. All right, nothing real significant there. And uh, yeah, personally, um, low volatility coming into the green 55. Typically, that is a sell on the first pass. Second pass, the third one is a little bit more risky. Um, so do we put in a higher low here and then try for some upside? I would say yes, um, as long as we're above the green box, back below the green box, well, pivots may turn around quickly. And, you know, still a threat of a downside move uh, to test this level one more time. And in general, as long as we're above this pivot right here, this week, 24.5, um, probably going to be, you know, onwards and upwards. But um, again, you know, the two-day bearish divergence play, you know, if we put in another, yet an, yet again, another lower high, that would be, and I think I said that yesterday, is I want to see three drives, right, where price is making lower highs and the RSI is making higher highs. But we are getting out of the bullish control zone on the two-day time frame. So that points for the bulls. Expansion is above 25%. So if we see volatility expand above 25%, we're going to expect a 30% move in either direction. And the stochastic is going to give us that direction. That is our momentum indicator. So as long as we're above uh, 26,500 or 26,532 on the two-day time frame, momentum is going to remain to the upside. And a 30% move, where would that take us from where we're at right now? Let's see, 30% up to 35 Thousand. So are we finally going to get the green palm tree candle that we're looking for, the God candle? I don't know. I have to say a fair amount of I don't know on that one. But I would generally be using uh, the 618 as kind of a judge. So yeah, back above this pivot at uh, 29, 29,000. Any kind of a daily or two-day closure back above there. Probably going to get going pretty fast to the upside. Um, yeah. And, you know, a little bit of a dislocation between stocks and um, Bitcoin over the past couple of days. Well, today, NASDAQ taking a big bounce up off the green box and uh, good reaction there. I did want to point out one trade I, I saw looming here for Mr. XLM, the sister coin to XRP. I definitely like XLM better than XRP personally. Um, I, don't ask me why, uh, but this, if we do confirm this as a higher low than this low, you'll have one, two, three higher lows. You'd be looking for a shot to the green 55 at a minimum, which is this guy right here. And um, yeah, that would be you know a nice 5% move to the upside. Five and a quarter, five and a half percent, um, not too bad. And bouncing off the purple 200 for the third time. So, uh, yeah, little deviation below the bottom side of the range and reclaims it and boom, back to the top side of the range. I mean, the top side of the range could be all the way up here, guys. So, um, or at least kind of that pivot right there. But, um, you know, just a short term play, perhaps. It works out, perhaps it does not, but something to keep an eye on because I think there is quite a bit. And even we got the bullish divergence on the stochastic here. So uh, that is a lower low, hidden bullish divergence again, uh, a lower low, but a higher low in price, right? Higher lows alongside uh, lower lows is gonna be your hidden bullish divergence play and actually gonna have multiple, multiple drives coming back all the way from that pivot right there, which is, boom, 
um, yeah, it, it is in fact higher lows all the way through. And so could get a little of extension. Uh, this one lagging behind the rest of the market. And that's why I liked it is this one does generally tend to get some love um, as you know, um, as Bitcoin and Ethereum are taking legs up today, you know, Bitcoin up 3%, Ethereum up 4%. Ethereum did lead the market this morning, which was interesting. So I'm just going to check in on Bitcoin dominance as well and Tether dominance. We talked about this. As Tether dominance comes down, well, altcoins rally. And as and Bitcoin, because uh, people are selling their Tether coins to buy some altcoins um, or Bitcoins. But if we get above that level, not going to be looking good. And yeah, uh, you know, perhaps makes a run back to the bottom side of the range. Volatility is increasing. Will cross down today at, um, you know, kind of the mid-level zone. So not much there. Bitcoin dominance, the other one. We wanted to talk, oh, and we did say likely to, uh, that was the target, the measure move off of this little pennant flag, bull flag, whatever you want to call it. Um, so Bitcoin dominance, I would expect Bitcoin to continue to outperform Ethereum as long as Bitcoin dominance is taking the leg up. Another big move today for Stacks, uh, Stacks, Probably going to take a, um, you know, a little bit more of a leg higher and tag that green 55 one more time. Stacks uh, had a momentous year uh, and then pulled back. And so we'll see if Stacks can bring it back. Um, also wanted to bring up this um, point that we talked about on the Gaussian channel, which is pretty interesting here. Um, if I can get my internet to start working. On the daily, the weekly time frame. Yes. <clears throat> so as we denoted after, let's use the longer price index. Um, as long as... Uh, well, once this thing flips green and we break above it, sorry, once breaking above the mean band after it turns red, right? Typically, well, what's happened in the past? As we've flipped from red to green, that has been the start of every kind of major bull market in Bitcoin's history um, on the weekly time frame for the Gaussian channel. Again, so we flipped. We broke the mean band, broke above it. This one did not test back in. This one clearly did um, and, and you know, broke the mean band back to the downside. So as long as we hold that mean band, the mean, mean band, well, you could probably consider you know, the market in favor of some upside. And I think yesterday there was some FUD news that Gary you know, denied the Bitcoin ETF, et cetera, et cetera. So... Um, I don't know. Is it a fake pump today? That would be my suspicion. That would be my suspicion. And But if we can get back above, well, it says 28.5 there. Let's see what it says on this guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for, yeah, as long as we're, you know, um, if we can clear back above 29,000 on the daily time frame, that would be good enough to do it for me. Also noting this, yeah. Probably going to run into some sell pressure here. And we did have a death cross looming. This is when the green 55 crosses the purple 200, which is this guy right here. Boom. Death cross looming. And it was actually crossed a couple days ago, uh, but it just uncrossed itself. And that's sometimes what can happen. So if we get an immediate rejection here and start closing back below 26,300, I would say that is going to be the major pivot on the market. 26.3, the last daily low uh, of this candle, then uh, yeah, probably going to revisit this low and uh, play out some additional uh, bearish divergence. What a bull trap. What a baloney trap here. 
And again, uh, using our Fibonacci retracement tool from the low to the high, you can see it it's getting rejected at the not 0.5. We already had a bounce to the 618 and just retraced back to the not 0.5. So bit of a fake pump, maybe, maybe not. Um, I'd be looking for strength in the stock market and um, and weakness in the dollar to start to call that bull market again. Other than that, guys, uh, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, blessed and highly favored day, and I will check back with you tomorrow. Take care.